It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on the award-winning CBJ Radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday nights, and tonight's no different. Baltimore progressive rock metal band Kraft. They released their first work back in 2020. Well, at the beginning of COVID, and they haven't stopped. They just released a remastered version of their single, Seasick. And we're stoked to have guitarist and singer Isaac Kraft on the show. First, Isaac, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeff. Well, wow, 2020, you released the first stuff, but when did you start getting the band together? So uh, 2020, like you said, is when I released uh, my first batch of music. And at that point, it was a solo project. And I released it at the perfect timing in March, right before everything uh, shut down. So it's been a bit of a resurgence the past like year or so of all that material that we've kind of been like sitting on. So it's good to like hear it again, get some like remastering done on some of the tracks. And yeah, um, so when the solo project evolved into what is now Craft, the band um, was around like 2022 when we could actually start playing some uh, shows around the Baltimore area. And then it became a full band uh, project. Yeah, because what were you thinking like six months after you released Seasick? Were you like, this is never going to happen or what? I was like, oh shit, perfect timing, go figure. <laughs> yeah, just my luck. I released my debut album and uh, COVID hits. So, yeah, I mean, how is the band, has it been the same guys since 2022? Has it changed? What? Uh, yep, uh, same guys. Um, it's uh, well, interesting. Nice. Uh, yeah, no, it's great. Um, we all get together and uh, we, we have a good time. We all get along. We've before we started doing the uh, original music thing and pushing uh, the band, we were playing uh, cover gigs for a while. So we were just in the bar scene to like 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. on the weekends and just getting you get getting to know each other there. So, yeah, which is good, which is good to, to practice and, and to get each other's vibe going because you're kind of, I mean, you're kind of a prog rock band, you're kind of a rock band, you're kind of a metal band. Is everybody, is this everybody, is this your sound, Isaac? What is this? So it's primarily uh, my sound. I gravitate toward listening to a lot of uh, metal and rock music, as you can tell from what we put out. But the uh, drummer in the band has a uh, funk gospel background. So he brings that to uh, this project, which I think gives it a pretty unique sound, um, especially when we started writing together. And the guitarist is a jazz background. And then the other, the bass player is a rock background. So we're getting a little bit uh, diverse around here. <laughs> yeah. Well, Seasick, The Hollow, and Gates, your three albums. Three songs that start each album. You got theme one, theme two, theme three. Is this like the theme of the album? What, what is this? Yep. So that's kind of like how we're starting each uh, uh, record. And I'm hoping to eventually release enough records to have just a theme album. So it's just like you can go through all of like the uh, the tracks. But yeah, it, it, it basically, th they're all like 60 seconds uh, short intros giving kind of like the uh, tonality of what the record will sound like, um, whether it's like hinting at the keys of what most of the songs are in or just like the overall vibe of the album. Yeah, because has the sound changed at all in the three albums? So it has, and it's mostly been influenced by the other guys in the band. Yeah. So it's, su it's subtle changes, but um, it's definitely moving to a heavier direction as we're going forward. We're currently uh, writing um, new music right now, so kind of pumping out what we already have, writing some new music, and it's really going to um, evolve from the sound that we currently have. Yeah. Go check Isaac and the guys out there at craftband.com. It's K-R-A-P-F. They're on Facebook, Instagram. Their latest single is the remastered version of Seasick. It's also out now. Well, who is this JVP Sounds? Who, who remastered these tracks? So that's uh, Jason Van uh, Puderoin. Um, he's a Canadian uh, Juno award-winning um, uh producer so he's um got some high profile client uh tell um he's worked uh, a lot with uh mother mother 
He's done some work with uh, Nickelback and Simple Plan. So it was awesome to connect with him and have a little bit of his um, uh, expertise dialed into the tracks that we already have. Well, that's cool. Well, and, and prog rock's kind of resurging lately, and there's a ton of Canadian prog rock bands. Yeah, you got Rush is the heavy hitter, of course, oh, yeah. from back then. And now uh, one of the artists that I really have enjoyed lately, if you've um, heard of him, uh, Devin Townsend, Devin Townsend yeah. Project. Yeah, it's definitely, he's been a big influence on what we've done. Yeah, there's a band, it's like two guys, Jupiter Hollow, I think is yeah. what they're called. They're out of Canada. They're they're pretty sweet. They, they're like a Thule little harder rushy kind of sounding band. Yeah. I mean, what do the guys think about remastering the, the C6 songs? Do they like it? Because it was kind of like your project then. Right. Yep. So they're on board with it. Um, like I said, we've all known each other for a long time. So there's not really a lot of like egos in the band besides me, which is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, they're all, all cool with remastering some of that old stuff because like you, like you hinted at, um, I spent uh, a lot of money, time writing, and a lot of just like personal, like foundational work, uh, putting these out right at the beginning of COVID, and then it's just like uh, we're basically can't do anything for 2020 and 2021. And I feel like there's value in a lot of the work, so just giving a little bit of activity on the social media as we're working on this new project. Yeah, uh, building more momentum with the stuff that people kind of know, or maybe know, or if they don't, they can re-listen to it it sounds better because we just played autumn before we brought you on tell us about the song so autumn was the very first song that was tracked uh by me so it has a special place in uh, my heart um it is a uh recurring um figure or theme in the artwork that we have so there's like a um uh, a, a female apparition like silhouette on all of the artwork on seasick the hollow gates and then the single work that has happened and that is this character autumn so it's not like the season it's a um, individual and all of the work is kind of like it's like all the songs stand like individually but there's like this long like story being told throughout all of the work as well as it, for like the people who are really into like listening to lyrics and stuff so that's kind of is the beginning of what the project was with autumn and the song was uh written and tracked uh by me so it's funny because on that seasick record for good or for worse I played the drums, the guitar, the bass, and the vocals. Wow. And then, and then after that, I was like, I need to get some like heavy hitters in here, like some actual like drummers and some actual like bass players. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's the song where it started. Well, in the artwork you mentioned with the theme, was this your idea or this, is this, this Kaylin Knight who's doing your art? So it was uh, my idea, but uh, she's predominantly done all of the artwork and has some creative liberties and uh, taking kind of like just some lyrics that I'll send her and just like a general overarching like story to the grand picture and she'll interpret it into her uh, creative digital art. So cool. Well, it's, it's funny because we talk about art with some people and they're like, oh, it's somebody in Indonesia or something that's doing my art. She's actually in Maryland. Did you know her? Or how'd you guys hook up? So she's been to um, some shows of ours and whatnot. And so we just got connected into the Baltimore scene. So uh, Baltimore is actually a really cool scene, depending on who you ask. But I think it's a really cool scene. Um, and it has a lot of great just like uh, artists, whether they're digital or painters or writers. There's a lot of music going on around here. So as soon as you get plugged into a couple of venues or circles, everybody starts knowing each other. Well, that's cool. Well, and speaking of shows, you guys played a big one at Ram's Head. Was that the first time you've played there? Yep. So that was the first time we played there. And that was our, uh, our first uh, national act show that we got to be opening support for, uh, for Blackstone Cherry. So I was really pumped about that one. Yeah. How, how'd it go? I thought it went well. Um, feedback from the venue was positive. Um, 
uh, Black Stone Cherry put on a great show. They were definitely um, just very entertaining performer performers, very talented band. And so we saw a lot of uh, momentum boost from just uh, that show and just meeting a lot of people and getting to talk to people. Oh, yeah. Well, and Kingdom Collapse was on the bill. Those guys are an up-and-coming new band. Yeah, I believe, if I uh, remember correctly, they're from Texas, and they got some bangers, too, and all of very nice dudes, very kind to us uh, when we were there. Because, you know, as the opening support, our job is to just shut up, get out of the way, go yeah. up, put on a show, and then fuck off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go stand by the merch table. Yeah. <laughs> way to go, guys. Thanks a lot. Well, when you pull up you guys on Spotify... I mean, as unique as your name is, there's like three other craps out there. I was like, what the hell? I yeah. put on one and it was like this Japanese track or so. It was, I don't even know what the hell it was. I was like, well, this isn't them. Yeah, we got a bunch of burners. That? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was surprised um, how many uh, crafts were out there as well because I thought we were unique too, Jeff. I thought we were unique too. I just could not believe that. I was like, well, this is not the right band. And then I, I looked again and I found another one that wasn't you guys. And I was like, what, what is going on here? But yeah, go, go find the right one. It's like a black circle with their KRAPF, the logo in the, uh, and it's also on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Go and, go and find that one. So Pavement, I mean, are they pushing you guys? Who are you working with? Yep. So we're doing like just a little like um, trial radio play um, with Pavement. Um, they were uh, gracious enough to kind of just like take a track, listen to a few things and um, test the waters, I guess, is the best way to put it. So I'm hoping just by meeting, you know, people like you. And once again, thanks for having me on and talking to me about uh, my music and whatnot, that we can gain some more momentum and traction and really get this thing fired up. Yeah, because how do we do it? I mean, that's the biggest question in rock. How the hell do we get our name out there? What, what, what has been working so far for you? So um, it's, it's kind of a slow burn, but it's necessary, um, especially like in the, the Baltimore scene where I'm at, just going out to shows and meeting other bands and people is done like a lot of uh, wonders. So it's, you're meeting a lot of musicians, a lot of artists. Everybody wants to make it. The reality is most people aren't. <laughs> yeah. But it's like we do it because we love it. And it's uh, enjoyable. So just being plugged into the scene uh, and building a reputation, whether it's just like we're doing the original band stuff or we're doing like uh, cover gigs throughout the state of Maryland or going like out of state and doing stuff and meeting people and then pitching like, Hey, I got all these songs on Spotify, Apple music. You should check it out. If you know, you hit it off, you want it to be like authentic and re uh, real, not just like, Hey, listen to my shit. Yeah. Like, you know, if you spike a conversation with somebody and they get to talking, it's like, all right, it, it here's a plug and it, it works most of the time. So yeah. And then just like little things of just being like hit up in my email uh, just because having a little presence in the band, they're like, Hey, you guys want to come down play Ram's head, open up for Blackstone Cherry. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. So. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of hard work. That's for sure. Seasick, the remastered version just came out on Friday. Tell us about the song. So, uh, this song is, um, it's, uh, it, a lot of the songs, I guess, sound kind of happy, but they're more like, uh, dark in the sense that they're usually about like grieving or loss so it's like disguised as like this happy like poppy prog rock uh, metal stuff but it's kind of just like depressing to me when I'm listening to it but I love it for that because um, it's like it's therapeutic and I know everybody writes for different reasons but for me everything that I write is just very personal and just very um authentic to who i am and it's just kind of you know sappy and cliche in a sense of just like you know even if you get like bogged down beat down or you're not feeling it just remember like stuff that's made you feel fulfilled or happy and just like kind of keep going and just chugging away at it yeah i've listened to it and i'm like yeah this is kind of a dark song when, when you're <laughs> listening to the lyrics so uh, you're gonna hear it here in a second your hair is your hair all one length is it all one length? Maybe not right now. It needs a needs a trim. 
Um, but I am thankful for my genes that it helps me have the rocker look so I can sell myself better. Exactly. <laughs> you got the look. You like the, I mean, you got the hair pulled back now. You, you like it pulled back or you like it all down? Uh, I like it down, but if I'm exclusively on the mic and singing, it's great. If I have to play guitar and sing, I can't see shit. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and it's, it's hard to play guitar and sing at the same time and uh, keep everything. Yeah, especially when you're like just blinded by all this hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when there's a black wall in front of you. Uh, so what's next? What's next with the band? So uh, we are in recording season right now. We have a very um, exciting uh, collab that we're going to be doing. Um, we are in, in the studio. Uh, I'm actually in the studio tomorrow. So maybe we can connect again down the road and we can talk more about that. But yeah, it's, it's writing season and we're going to have a brand new record out early next year and um, just make a big go at it. Wow. Are we still working with JVP sounds or how are we doing it? Yep. So this one is going to be uh, um, uh, mixed uh, by Jay. Okay. So, uh, Prior to that, all of the mixing was done uh, at a studio in Baltimore called Secret Sound. And that's where we're doing the tracking, but we're going to be sending out the mixing this time uh, to Jay to get his um, industry expert dialed in on it. So hopefully it gives um, some more like legitimacy to us. Yeah, for sure. No, uh, incredible. So keep your eye on big things coming. Go check them out. Craftband.com. They're at K-R-A-P-F band. Dot com. They're also on Facebook, Instagram, and go check out the remastered version of Seasick. It is out now, and you're going to hear it right now. Well, Isaac, thanks so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's Seasick. It's Craft. It's a takeover. CBJRadio.com.